chemical formulas are what we're going to be talking about today. I wanted to start off with a couple that you're familiar with. So you've heard of CO2. You've probably heard of C6H12O6. So in these chemical formulas, we're being given a couple of things. Here, the C is the symbol for carbon. And so you're given the symbol for carbon and the symbol for oxygen. Over here, we've got the symbol for carbon, the symbol for hydrogen, and the symbol for oxygen. Now, we're given a second thing. So we have these numbers here. Now, this little number is in subscript, meaning it's written small, and it tells you about the previous element. So with this oxygen here, we know we've got two of them. And so carbon dioxide would look something like this. You've got a carbon atom and you've got two oxygen atoms. So over here, you can see a six. That tells us you've got six carbon atoms. This 12 tells you you've got 12 hydrogens. And this six tells you you've got six oxygens. This is the chemical formula for sodium chloride, also known as table salt. Now, the formulas we previously saw so these ones, you can see that each of these symbols was just one letter, but there's many elements on the periodic table. So often we have to use two letters. So the way you can know when one symbol ends and another begins is if a symbol is two letters, the second letter is always lowercase. And so when you see a new capital letter, you know that you're starting a new element. So another compound, is calcium bromide. Now this two tells you that you've got two bromines here, but there isn't a number written right here. The lack of a number in chemistry always means one. So there's one calcium there. And over here, there's one chlorine and one sodium. So with these next two chemical formulas, I wanna show you what parentheses mean. So here's sodium nitrate, and here's calcium nitrate. Now what you can see is that there's parentheses on this one, and there are not parentheses here. So there are some compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Now polyatomic ions are like a packet of atoms that often come together. So one example of these is nitrate. And so here we've got nitrogen, and three oxygens. We call this nitrate. And that's a packet of atoms that often come together. We've got it over here in sodium nitrate. You've got sodium with the nitrate. Now this compound has two nitrates. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in this container. container. So here I've got one packet of nitrate, or NO3. And I'm going to make a second packet. So that's three oxygens with one nitrogen. So I've got my three oxygens here and my one nitrogen. And we can put those in our packet. And that is our NO3. And then we also have a calcium. So this calcium is going to bond to these two packets of NO3. And in each of these packets, you've got three oxygens and one nitrogen. And so that's kind of what the parentheses mean. It means that you've got a packet of NO3, and there are two of them, one, two. And so that is what calcium nitrate looks like. So as a quick review, you have multiples of everything inside of the parentheses. So the example we gave of that was calcium nitrate, where you've got two of these nitrate packets. Each packet or group here would be three oxygens and one nitrogen. And so that entire packet is represented by this NO3. It's inside a parentheses, which means you have two of these. So as a quick review, H2 says that there's two hydrogens bonded to each other. And H2O says there's two hydrogens bonded to each other and to oxygen. The lack of a number, the fact that there's no number written there means that there's one. 